so no more running. I aim to misbehave. This landing is gonna get pretty interesting. Defying interesting. Oh God, oh God, we're all gonna die? She has a name. So does this. I call it Vera. At last, we can retire and give up this life of crime. Well said. Wasn't that well said, Zoe? Had a kind of poetry to it, sir. Hello everyone and welcome back to Brown Coat Reviews. I'm your host Laura. Now this is part of our 30 day challenge where we're going to do 30 videos in 30 days, tons of content full of comic book reviews, some recommendations, and some books that I suggest that you definitely skip. I also will have plenty of comic book collections, some amazing titles, some beautiful artwork, and then of course some more of our behind the scene content. You're not going to want to miss anything so please subscribe, like, share these videos and definitely hit that bell icon so that way you know when the videos are posted live. Now, today we're going to talk about a different recommendation. Velvet. Velvet was recommended by the illustrious Dan over at Ultimate Comics Raleigh and Velvet, I have decided, is officially the title that no one is reading that everyone should be. So if you're following my Instagram account, you would have seen this very cover and a couple little sneak peeks of the artwork inside on Instagram. Ever want to know what on earth I'm up to? Check it out. Now, Velvet is the initial idea of what if James Bond was unavailable and Money Penny had to step up from behind the desk and save the day, but instead of Money Penny just being the original flirt of James Bond's back in the old days, Instead, what if she actually had the same skill set and knowledge and kick buttness that James Bond did, but she was put behind the desk for a reason, but no one else knew except for one other person that she was capable of all of that. So now we have to find out why she was sent to behind the desk. We get little hints of it, but that story is definitely not over. But then you also see how incredibly capable this woman is and part of me is wondering why on earth did they put her behind the desk because she does not belong there. But then you also have this overall mystery of our lead spy is unavailable. He has been betrayed. It could be a mole within MI6. It could be the agent himself who was the mole. You've got to find out where this took place, how deep the conspiracy goes, and it's an awesome story. Now, you ready to take a look? So let's take a quick glance at Velvet. As you can tell, some of the artwork is very realistic. It is definitely shot more like an action movie, which just makes this a really fun read. I consumed it in one day, gladly. I am dying to go back and grab volume two. You have our normal espionage-esque things. Her sitting dutifully behind the desk. Let me just jump ahead. And then she starts being a spy, kicking butt, taking names, dodging bullets, jumping through windows. It's amazing. You have all these different kind of artistic sequences where You see, like I said, the action, you see the storyline, and everything just starts unfolding very, very quickly. It's an incredibly impressive story. You do have the typical James Bond sequence towards the end with the sort of masquerade ball type of thing where she does get all dolled up, 
for the event and starts the liaison and then gets the information that she's looking for. Kicks butt, takes names. Amazing stuff. As I've said before, this is an incredibly quick read. I was consumed it in one sitting. There was no stopping me. The only thing that I have cautioned people about with this story. Don't just grab volume one, grab volume two as well. This ends with such a great cliffhanger that you can't stop. You cannot stop. And I will say this volume one is only $10. It is not terribly expensive. So you're not breaking the bank to check out this storyline. It's just incredibly well done. The only other caution that I will give you for those that do not like sex or nudity in a storyline, this has it, but again, it has a purpose within the storyline, just like some James Bond movies will have sex as part of the storyline. She is not just a gigolo, thank God. Um, you see where she is using her womanly wiles to get what she wants, and sometimes she is, of course... She will sleep with someone and then she will do the typical spy thing, which is take a look and find some of that top secret information that she needed or she couldn't get access to until she slept with the guy. So if that offends you, eh. but I will say it is not just random naked bodies all over the place. It has a very specific purpose within the storyline. Overall, I loved the storyline and the other thing that I will say, so you've noticed of course that she has sort of this blonde streak in her hair. It's actually a gray streak. For her, she is actually older, so she is not to the point of, you know, retirement, but she is not a spring chicken anymore. And when she was doing more of the 007 spy things, she was a bit more of a spring chicken. And she will admit that in this storyline. And you see a lot of different times where she will go crashing through that window like I showed you. And she will, you know, roll out of the, the fall. And she'll be the one that, that's saying, oh my gosh, this used to be easier. I did actually like that she was more of a seasoned agent. Because again, it just brings something very unique to the storyline. The other thing that I really liked, yes, she has an eidetic memory. She can recall a lot of very important details, but because she's been on both sides of the coin, so she's been active in the field, and then she's also been relegated to being behind a desk. She can recall a lot of details. She has a lot of contacts that people either would know that she has or would not even assume that she would have because she's just a secretary. I liked that. But I also felt that it brought a lot of depth to her character and it really made me want to know more about her. There are plenty of other spy stories that I've either read or watched and a lot of them leave the agents very cold, cutthroat, and I don't always want to know more about them because there's just this sort of void for personality sometimes. I didn't find that with her. I really liked her inner voice. I liked how she was approaching things, and I really loved the action sequences. So I need volume two. I will be getting volume two very, very soon. But this is one that you will grab, you will flip through, and there will be no stopping you. So check out Velvet, and like I said, please save yourself the frustration. Grab volume one and volume two, so that way you can finish it at least back to back, if not in the same sitting, because you will not want to stop. Definitely a worthy read. Now, please, down in the comments, let me know if you've read Velvet. Did you like it? Have you already read Volume 2? And please, please tell me that it's just as good as Volume 1. I hope. Fingers crossed. If you haven't read Velvet, are there other spy espionage type storylines that you've liked that you would recommend? I can't wait to hear from you all and... Of course, this is Laura from Brown Coat Reviews with another recommendation, and I will look forward to seeing you all very soon. Have a great day. Bye.